It has been quite a while. This is Mambo Hathor Urzali Akana, aka the Voodoo Diva. And right now, I need you to first subscribe to this channel, like, and make sure you are commenting and giving us some of the feedback that we all need. Now, today we're going to be covering a very powerful loi, a loi that is very feared but is super duper potent in indigenous voodoo. So I want you guys to stay tuned because you know it's been a while, but you about to get some information you ain't get nowhere else. Stay locked. I got you. So when we talk about the origins of Metcafu, first off, you have Met, which means master. And then you have Gafu, which means the crossroads. Okay, so when we look at the dynamic of what Metcalfe is, he is the master of the crossroads. Okay, now, we know Papa Lekpa also has a deal in the crossroads. However, in each of them, they all are ruled by different energy. Metcalfe deals with the moon energy, as wherein Papa Lekpa deals with the energy of the sun. Okay, now, with that said, when we go into the power and dynamic of what Metcalfe does, his dominion deals with the underworld. It deals with the underworld which is influenced by moon energy that traps demonic and disagreeable spirits from wreaking havoc on the physical plane. Okay, and disclaimer, he is not twin brother to Babalanka and vice versa. They have their own energy and characteristics about them, okay? So let's get that cleared out. Now, when we go into deeper energy of where Metcalfu has been all throughout timing in the origins of Metcalfu, there is so much that dates back into ancient Egypt with the moon god Khonsu. Khonsu was a moon god that was responsible for functions of the night, the energy of the moon, the energy of the underworld. Okay, he had dealings with that as well. Now, when we go into the Native American tribe. There is a Native American tribe that had the god, a god, a moon god, that was named Inuit. Okay? Inuit. Now, keep following with me. When we go into that, Inuit means night. Okay? In Creole. So when you now go even back into ancient Egypt, we had the sky goddess who did what? Hovered over as the goddess Inuit okay hovering over the moon and the stars so we have that element all with the nuit now when we go into the arawak taino tribes okay as that pertains to aet in indigenous voodoo we see that they used to call metkafu as another alternate of names by the name of met minuit met minuit again met when we have that met is meaning what master of the night, master of the night, Met Minri. Okay, and he used to be looked at as a midnight chief, is really what he was known for. Okay, and this midnight chief energy was very powerful and important in those times. Why? Because he dealt with the conflict and affairs of the sacred secret societies. The sacred secret societies went by the name of the Bizongo. You also had Subway. Those are the obvious, but there were some other ones that are forbidden to even mention their names because it's a need to know basis. However, that energy all dates back again also into the revolution. We'll get into that a little later, but just understand that Metcalfu has always been here. The energy has always been here throughout time. Okay? Now, in the Bisongo and the Subwell, they were energies, again, that dealt with revolutionary, with fighting, with making sure certain secret orders of intel, of people needing to travel and do certain things in a timely order was done in those after-hour timings, in which who? Metcalfu has the dominion over those times. 
that past midnight time, if you will. Now when we talk about the flags, when we look at the colors in the term of Metcalfe, what we have to understand that in the South, specifically, that was the area in which Dessalines ended up creating La Mecque d'Igène, the indigenous army, in which the colors were red and black. Hence where you get the Arawak Tainos because they were that army. Okay, so the red and black has a very sacred origin behind it. Now, also, we have to remember, when you see the native headdresses, or you see that natives would paint their faces with the red and the black, that is something that has always been there, but more in the south rights of everything. So that's that origin. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, in the north, it was different because that's ruled more with the cemetery energies, with the foreign influence. And with that said, when one basically um, has died or moved and passed on, they say that that person is on day. On day meaning that they're dressing in all black to go and mourn or go to deal with affairs of the cemetery. Okay? And it's also another thing too when you see a lot of people talk about having a hat or having a tall hat. Remember, those foreigners coming in a lot of times they were wearing what? Those tall hats, those that kind of style within that time frame, okay? That was more a foreign influence. So you would have more of just the black in the north versus the red and the black in the south, okay? Now, when we go into Metcalfu as it pains or it goes into the energy of offerings, our offerings. So Metcalfu's offering is a very serious thing. And disclaimer, if you are not from the Bizongo, somewhere, right, or have someone from affiliation or association of them to come and conduct such ritual for Metcafu, then don't try this at home. Ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm saying. It's a very serious situation. Metcafu is that crossroads. It can go between <clears throat> life or death, okay? So, with that being said, the typical offering that goes down is a live black bull or black goat typically but once again remembering that in the north they usually will take that live black bull over to the cemetery for it to be slain for it to be sacrificed as opposed to the south where they would go to the crossroads itself in those wee hour times and do the offering there at the crossroads itself okay so that is the difference there now, here's another powerful thing that we have to look at when we're looking at the just how powerful Metcalfu's energy is to so much when it comes to magic and levels to the power and discipline, etc. in Haitian in indigenous voodoo. Now, when we take a look at how things are done, let's not forget, there is a band, there is an energy of what we call the Gaga that starts off in the earlier parts of the day within the culture. But as it goes and winds down into the later parts of the night, into the rear part hours of the night, as the night falls, it becomes somewhat. Okay? Now, it becomes somewhat, and what do we say about somewhat? That's secret society stuff. That's Met Kafu. He is the head poncho. You cannot have or talk about these societies or do anything because Met Kafu is the main man. He is the one that you must get the guidance from. That has to give you passage for what you're going to learn and understand within that society. Now, what usually happens is that when a gaga, or which has now turned into something, musically is beating the drums, has certain energy going, as they get to an area, habitation is what it's called, proper word, and they get there, what they end up doing is they end up stopping. They stop not only first because they see a red and black flag. Let me be very clear. The red and black flag must be planted on two specific kind of trees. It's either first the calabash tree or the palmis, which is the palm tree. So a calabash or a palm tree specifically. And most of the time, no, all the time I should say, it has to be a specific person that's chosen to go up that tree. No, 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 no things to strap and to make sure you're cute when you get up there, no. Raw, with that flag, 
to go up to the tallest tree in that area, be again, either a calba calabash or a um, palm tree, to plant that flag. There is such a power in that. That is the sole representation that Mecca, fu nalaku, he is in the habitation of that area. Okay, ceremony and things, rites of passage have been done to him in that area. So now, when that particular Sunkwell band or that music, that energy is coming, they have to seek the passage. So they will stop when they see that, that's an indicator, and they can also, those that know in the Sunkwell, feel the energy, they have to stop and do a salutation, or ocean, or salutation, salutation to make sure that they properly greet the energy they're coming across because they know this energy is present before they can make the rest of their travels for the night before they can make the rest of their rounds whatever that's going to be in ritual in the crossroads in whatever they have to do so it's really really powerful this thing is is no joke like the energy of metcalf is very serious now when i go into the Habitation side of things. Let's go a little bit deeper into the habitation and how things go on in that way. In my personal habitation, I speak from the personal experiences. Couple things. I've noticed first off that we have to understand that when a spirit or a law, we should say, right, takes over or possession of anybody's body, it has a different role that it plays in the human's anatomy. Okay? For example, Ogufigai, or Ogufigai case in point, when he comes in, most of the time that person will feel a very heavy pressure in the frontal space of their head. So this sudden thumping, headache or this sudden thumping, that is an indicator to let that person know there is an energy that wants to come in. Now in the case of Metgafu, what will happen is that in the left hand, there starts to have a cramp that takes place. That cramp is because there's a sudden electricity that goes into the hand that's causing this cramp. And it is a beginning indicator that the possessee, if you will, the schwal, is about to be mounted. They may start pacing around. There's a different kind of energy you see that wants to come in, but a lot of times it will be through the hand that it starts first, okay? So there's that. Now, with that said, Metcalfu's energy, once now, this energy is fully on the shawal. It's very disciplined, more militant than you think, very disciplinary, very authoritative would be the word, okay? Must be taken very, very seriously. He can be very loud, you do not speak unless spoken to. When he comes, you better be ready with what he needs. You better be ready to hear what he has to say with the prophetic things he has to speak on, you can't speak what he's doing it, okay? It's a very militant, very, you know there is a God of power there. There's an energy of a strong vibration around and you can feel it. You can hear a pin drop on that floor, how quiet it gets, okay? So also, people refer to that in the, the Creole language as gumun, okay? So, so I told Lua gumun. Lua gumun meaning this is a grown, this is not no joke, this ain't for no kids, for no babies. This is grown folk magic we're talking about, okay? Serious rites of passage type of energy. Now, um, one thing I can always say too is the healing part of Metcalf was also very important. People don't talk about that too much. The healing part of Metcalf who comes within a sound frequency, he can literally scream demons away from the person that he's healing. Okay, very powerful. And since again, being the one that gives the passage, he could equally be the one that says, you gotta go, don't stay, you can't be in this habit, this, this surrounding or this energy field of this person anymore when he's in that healing right, as you should say. Now, um, another big thing we have to remember is that people ain't gonna be around here. See, people will fake a lot of things out there. But you see that possession of Metcalfu? Uh -uh. It ain't happening. You know why? Because Metcalfu is not a law that you can play with and fake. Because that could be your life in return if you play that game. Okay? 
So, <laughs> word to the wise, okay? Now, also, um, another beautiful thing that I saw is when it comes time to eat. When Metcalf was honestly and truly in somebody's habitation, it's not you're putting the offering and just hoping the energy will absorb, no. He is physically now in the domain, in the temple, in the area where this whole space, special for him, has been prepared for his food to his likings after the live sacrificing of said animal, etc. Now the cooking part and all the great work that goes into that. But what I see is very significant and very powerful is first off, once he sits, there needs to be two boys that must uh, have their hands placed on his shoulder while he eats. They must remain there the whole time until he has eaten, which usually doesn't last very long from what I see. He's more into the spirit towards the end of just picking to what he favors here, the kingship, okay? Godship, if you will, and then letting the rest be for the, the family, for everyone there, the attendees. And so it's very powerful because, you know, Food can't be handled, once again, food cannot be handled if it is not the head of the ceremony. The person who is the head conductor, the head poncho, the, you know, the sample, visa affiliation, or that whole vibe, it cannot be anything outside of that. So they have to be the ones who even are in the privilege to present the food to Metcalfe, okay? That's how deeply rooted it is when you're talking about Metcalfe's energy, okay? Um, he is an energy that the discipline just comes as a second nature. And when he has food and everything is in a, we'll say, finished position, then the leftovers are left behind to go and be buried in certain sacred places within the habitation, okay? Yes, so that's how that goes with Metcalfe and the whole functioning, okay, of what kind of offering, all the way down to how it's conducted, his movements and the energy when feeding and giving him offering. Now let's go to the characteristics of Metcalfu. Metcalfu was served and dealt with differently from the north to the south right in IET. For example, in the north, because of the ports, and also the area where the start of slavery really took place, the energy of how he was dealt with was different over there. When rituals were conducted, they were conducted in the cemeteries, okay? And of course, it was because of the new culture and the new wave of energy coming in. So it was a different style and approach as to how Metcalfe was dealt with in rituals, as opposed to the South. Now, the South, from the north, going into the south, is where the slaves, it had become what we would call like a safe haven for the runaway slaves to come into the south. What the south was known for in ritualistic purpose dealt with the crossroads. Their rituals were conducted at the crossroads. Specifically, the tradition that comes from leaving food back in the slavery times when they were escaping from the north to come to the south, the ritual of keeping food at the crossroads for those slaves when they arrived came from the origins of Metcalfu, because what? At the crossroads, okay? Now, many of them, sadly, would die when they reached at the crossroads. And this was very symbolic because the Bizongo slash Sunquell writes, what they would do is they would now have to conduct rituals once again at the crossroads to see those spirits over so that they could use those spirits in the future to be able to call upon them to continue fighting in the revolution. So it was very, very powerful in how that energy correlated, but the way that they were served, you had your north that dealt more with the cemetery rites, and then you had the south that dealt with the physical crossroads in the country, pitch black dark, having to deal with it from that angle. And again, with Kafu, it was those wee hours of the night, okay? So that is the big differentiation between them. Now, when we move further into the speculations of how certain things were done, Many people think that Metcalfu uses a whip. Now I'm gonna give you the science on how that is not true. Kafu deals with a cane, much like the staff that we see of Kansu in ancient Egypt. Now let me get a little deeper with you. When an Uga 
is trying to call in the dead spirit of the crossroads. Many times they will go with the whip to the crossroads to make that same exact sound that those slaves were running away from. It's almost like a wake up, let's go. We need you here, we need your energy. And so that goes into a whole nother right because most of the times they call that a job, if you will, which is basically tormented spirits and tormented energies. Cause think about it. They're running away, fighting for their life to get somewhere else to be free. And they're hearing whips and they're hearing, you know, ways that they could get beaten or run chased down. So it was that kind of energy. A Uga will use the tool of the whip. But Metcalfu, when he comes in, he uses a cane, okay? So that was a huge differentiation. Many people think that, but it's not the, the case. Metcalfu is here to give passage. He doesn't need the whip to do that. He is that energy, you know, he's that embodiment of the crossroads, okay? So when you go to the crossroads, again, that's the calling of the different spirits, etc. and that was all the energy of a reenactment, that Ugum, or Mambo, if you will, is reenacting the same exact thing that they did to the slaves to try to wake them up, okay? The same way that they used to be dealt with in the physical world, he went and reenacted that in the spiritual world. So when we take a look at Metcalfu in pop culture, okay, well, one of these new shows that has come out is called Moon Knight. And in Moon Knight, it's very interesting because they literally show you the energy entity Kansu, which we know is Kafu, okay? And on top of that, they show that when that avatar, which is the Shual, becomes possessed, that it goes and does something all on its own, okay? When that spiritual possession comes into play. So that was a perfect representation in that sense. Now, number two on the list would be, of course, Doctor Strange. We've been saying this for a while, Doctor Strange is the complete energy of Metcalfu, completely personified, if you will, in terms of his job and his mission. What is he there to do? Uh, the energy of our guy, Doctor Strange, is all about making sure that in the multiverses that he's actually helping to block negative demonic spiritual, I mean, demonic energies, period, from having any way to harm, okay, humans, okay? And then making sure that the multiverses stay straight, stay in good form, so they don't tip out of balance and open those hell gates, if you will, okay? So again, Doctor Strange, for the longest, has been the one that helps to protect. Now, um, what's interesting and what we need to remember when it comes to the energy of Metcalfu, and I guess you want to say in contrast of Baon Samdi or Met Baon Samdi. Yes, I understand the whole energy of the deal with the dead, etc. But I want to make sure I make this very clear. Metcalfu deals with tormented spirits. You see, let me give you a great example. When the spiritual files or the data cannot be pulled up in the archives of your ancestor, that means that they trap somewhere. Hence the energy of, again, the multiverses. They trap within some layers here. And only Metcalfu can deal with that arena to try to dig them up, okay, for you. A lot of times people will do spiritual work and nothing's getting through because those spiritual files in your ancestral bloodline is lost. Now, on the flip side to Bao Long, Bao Samdi deals with the ascended spirits, the free spirits, the ones that now he's able to freely give advice to to kind of help navigate within that underworld, okay? But there's two different dynamics of what they do. All right, so so you overstand the balancing of that, okay? We don't get them mixed up. They do two different things, okay? In making part of the three chiefs. So in my experiences of uh, dealing with that Kafu on a more personal basis was a couple things. I'd say um, in lessons learned, most definitely, the more humble you are, the more knowledge. Um, when he wanted to answer questions that I had, he actually took me into the dark, pitch black darkness, away from everyone else to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with me of things, um, which I was very honored by for sure. Um, also, 
I love the indigenous purity side of things. Of course, you know, our traditions always get these bad names and this, this, that. And yes, while he is very, very powerful, it's not an energy that I felt of a threat or I felt of, of, of to be scared of or anything of that nature, okay? Um, when I see Metcalfu, Metcalfu always again gives you this authority figure and energy. It's never a game. It's always be on your best behavior kind of thing, right? And uh, one of the interesting things is that um, Metcalfu, of course, with the moon energy, is always most of the time will show up in a full moon. So it's very powerful. I'll never forget, you know, the pitch black that the moon is illuminating us. It made me actually think about the revolution days when they said that the full moon would be their guide through the darkness when they were going from one area to the next in um, the ICR revolution. So anyway, I, I just say that to say that it's very special. Um, another thing that's kind of funny is that if you take footage of Metcalfu, um, you'll end up seeing that your device that you used will become misfunction. All of a sudden, you, you're just not gonna get any footage. There ain't nothing gonna happen because you thought you got it, but then when you go back and check, there's nothing there. You know, that kind of vibe. So, seems Metcalf who ain't that one. That energy and frequency is so high that it won't stick, okay, to just the average, I guess, human devices, right? Yeah. So, Metcalf who all in all definitely gives that energy that, you know, with humility, with discipline, and with respecting the chain of command, you'll get so much more farther than you would, you know, thinking or acting any other kind of way, to say the least. So yeah, Medcalf, very, very powerful energy, yeah.